were busy with the parabola. We have already sketched it. We all that we knew how what the shape is about, x intercept, y intercept, turning point. And then we also did the inverse. Just for inverse sake again, and for practice sake, let's do the inverse again. If I give you any sketch, will you be able to do the inverse? Yes, yes. ma'am. Okay? So, first we will start with the turning point. Which is now going to be? One, two, one. Negative one and two. Negative one and two is round about there. Negative one and two. Then we've got x intercept of one and three. That must now be y intercept of one and three. The y intercept of three is now the x intercept of three. So now you've got to know from, from yesterday, you know that the inverse of a parabola looks like a parabola but fell on its side. So can you see it happening here? That there's the turning point going upwards and going downwards. And then also in that same red, we also see these two graphs must be symmetrical around the line. Let's make it green. Around the line, what do we call this line? Y equal to X. Y equal to X. So that is the line of symmetry of F, that was the blue one, and F. Minus 1, the inverse of f from yesterday. We didn't finish completely, and it's not just two seconds. Let's just do this completely. I want to go with the f minus 1 is a function, and you're going to say, why? <coughs> you didn't say the vertical line test. Every? For every x, there's not just one y. So if I do the vertical line test, that specific point is okay. For that x, there's only one y. But for every other x, so for instance here, there will be two y's. For this x, there will be two y's. And every other x will have two of them. For every x, does not just say one y. The question is, we have to restrict the domain of f so that the inverse of f will also be a function. So it's a very generally asked question that I've got to teach you about now. So I'm saying in plain English, if I take that parabola and cut off one of its legs, then the effect would be that the, the graph would be symmetrical around the line y equal to x. And then this thing will be a function. So I'm saying you've got to restrict the domain of the original graph so that the inverse will also be a function. Plain English, cut off one of the legs. So if I want to cut off one of the legs, what was the domain of the blue one? The domain was? X is an element of the real numbers. But if I restrict it around the turning point, because this is now knowledge you've got to build up. Around the turning point, I'm going to say cut off one of the legs. So in other words, I don't want that piece there. I only want this to be sketched. So that means that X has to be? Two or less than two, and including two, because there's no problem with two. But the moment that it goes further, there's going to be one x with two y's when I turn it around. But couldn't I have then just said, well, let's cut off the left hand side? So x must only be bigger than two. So you've got two options x big or equal to. Now, technically, if I ask you to restrict it, you can give me any which one of the two doesn't matter. And that's a two more question. Done. Because now, thinking about it, and I'm going to erase it now, if I do erase the right hand side and I said, okay, let's only say it must be smaller than. Then what does that mean for the inverse? The inverse will then have y is 
less than or two. Make sense? For the inverse. Let's just do that one then. So if x was less than, then that y should have been less than. Meaning that that leg is cut off now and that makes the inverse of f a function. Because the vertical line test is passed. Every x only has one y. And can you see them reflecting about that line? Can you see it reflecting? What I did there was completely not lacquer. But now you can actually see them reflecting each other. Go to the right, go to the right. to the right, there is your Let us get the equation. Guys, now this is a, a specific question that gets asked. Find a restriction on the domain so that it will be a, a function if I get the inverse. The inverse will never be a function unless you restrict it around the x-axis. It will always, when it falls down to the side, the parabola will always not be a function. What is the name of the inverse of a parabola? It's the inverse of a parabola. It doesn't have a name. What is the inverse of a straight line? Also a straight line. But the parabola, shame, it doesn't have a name. It's the inverse of the parabola. And that's it. Now, to find the equation, again, this is never asked, has never been asked. You never know, but I will bet money on it that it won't be asked. To find the equation of the inverse, unless it's much easier than this one. Unless it's just baby x squared, then it's okay. But this one, to find the equation, help me, what must I do? <coughs> x change y and x. X changes to y and y changes to x. Agree? But then, now I will not leave it that way. What's wrong with it? Y has to be the other It side. has to be, if it's a function, y equal to. Right? Mm -hmm. So if I want it as y equal to, here comes the conundrum, the, the problem. How will I get y alone? Take them to the other side. Because there's two of them. First of all, take them to the left. It's fine. But there's two of them. How will I make two of them one? HCF. Because then you're going to have a y inside and a y outside of the bracket. Doesn't help. Okay, let me take you out of your misery. Completing the square. Because completing the square will make this a bracket with just one y. So that I can take everything else to the other side and find my y. That's a basic principle in maths. If there's a square and a number, and you just want the y, you've got to do completing the square. square. So let's do completing the square. You love it, right? No. Okay, so how does completing the square work? So this has to be a one. Fantastic, I'm so happy about that. It is a one. Then we say, take the, that value there, minus four. What happens to this three? Nothing. Let's just put it on the other side so it doesn't bother me either. You could have just put it a little bit further here as well. That would be fine. But you're needing something here, which is when you take the negative 4 and you times it by half. And? Squeeze. Excellent, guys. So that gives me plus 4. Now remember, I am in an equation. If it was just an expression, I would have said plus 4 minus 4. Because it's an equation, I can put it on either side and also say plus four. four. So that I have so far x plus one. And then this is now a complete square when I factorize it. In this completing the square, we say square root of y square is y. Then we use the sign which is negative. And then we use the square root which is two. And thus I only have one y. This was my purpose, to make two y's become one y. And if there was just y and y, you could add them. But it's y squared and y. And now I've made it completing the square. So how do I get that y alone, please? Square By square rooting. So if you do square root, you're going to have square root of x plus 1 equal to y minus 2. I've made a mistake. What's wrong? Plus Thank you. The moment that you put the square root there because of yourself, taking away the square by square rooting it, there should be a plus or. Look at this thing. It's not a parabola anymore. You're right. 
That's not a parabola. It's the inverse of a parabola, and it's not going to look like a parabola. The straight line still was mx plus c. It was still a straight line, but this is not. So to get it finished, I'll have y equal to 2 plus or minus. We always write the number in front of the square root, and it's not really necessary. And if I really wanted to be picky about it, I would say let's rather write y equal to. Okay? And then we can say this is equal to the inverse of the parabola. So what are you learning here? That if ever there is a y equal to something something square root, it is the what? Inverse, inverse of a parabola. So if I gave you something like this, you should know that it is the inverse of a parabola. So if you again change the x's and y's around, you should be getting to a parabola. Okay? And then everything else that changed around that we did yesterday. Getting into the hyperbola, so it's a lot of nice revision, right, of your functions. Sketches, guys. If there's one thing you can bet your life on, is that they will ask you for the hyperbola speech. 90% of the time, you can always ask, like a 7, 8 more question. Please know this. Okay, that you learned to grade 11. To sketch it, where do we start? First of all, tell me if it's a 1, 3 or a 2, 4 quadrant. What the heck am I talking about? <laughs> if that A value, please remember it's A over X minus B, plus Q. That A value tells me if it's positive, it's in quadrant. One and three. So I'm saying generally, that's what I'm looking at. But then I have to first look at the asymptotes. Now we will generally ask you for the equation of the asymptotes, and that is one and two. I'm going to give it to you. X equals one. Y equals two. One and two are numbers. These are equations. These are special line equations. X equal to 1 is a vertical line. Y equal to 2 is a horizontal line. Right. Once we have that, can we start sketching? No. Yes, you can. If you want to start sketching, you already know that X is equal to 1. And Y is equal to? Two. And you've got a mark. Reluctantly, I might give you that mark, but at least if you now also know that it's in quadrant one and three, okay, but three is not going to be a problem. Because do I know where it cuts the x and y axis? Could it be here and there? Yes. Or here and there? So I've got to go make sure first before I start sketching. Therefore, I need the x intercept y intercept. Put y equal to zero, and we've got zero equal to six over x minus one. Plus two, remember, we've got lots and lots of techniques that you can go with alternatively. What would you do to find x? Take the two across. Cross multiplication. So this timed out there would give me two. Negative 2x plus 2 equals to 6. And guys, if you immediately do it, negative 2x plus 2 directly, that's fine. And then finding my x is going to be equal to, okay, let's roll the right 2x, is negative 4, and x is negative 2. Now I know that the x value is going to be here by negative 2. So I know if it's going to do this, it's going to have to be somewhere here that the y-intercept is also going to be. So I can actually draw it. Okay, so for the y-intercept, what do we do? What does the equation look like? y is equal to 6 over 0 minus 1 plus 2. And it gives me negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4, 4 which is about there. Trying to do it a little bit more accurate according to scale because I've got a plan with this. And then if I sketch it, please make sure that it goes closer, but it doesn't look like it's going to cut into it because you're going to lose a mark. Same thing here. It has to go closer, but not cutting it. But you know that it's 
closer, closer, but not cutting it. And that would be that for the hyperbola sketch. Done. A little bit of revision. So first of all, tell me what is the domain of, what was this, H? Domain of H? H is small numbers. H? Are the H's that are real numbers? That's it, guys. Two more, three. And what is then the range? All the Y's. Y cannot be. Another two marks for you. Okay, tell me. I'm going for the English just now. So what would be the range of the inverse? If the domain of H was, then the range of H minus 1 should be? X is it? Y is the element of your number space cannot be equal to Y cannot be equal to 1. Fantastic, guys. And the same here. What would be the domain of the inverse if this was the range? X is a real number. X is not equal to. So what is swapped? What is going to be the asymptotes? X is 2 and Y is 1. What is going to be the Y intercept? X is negative 2. X intercept. X is equal to negative. Everything swaps around. Okay, guys, so I don't ask the hyperbola, but we're doing this for the sake of revision and to show you how it, it can be functional. Okay, the other thing that they always ask is the axis of symmetry. What is the axis of symmetry for a hyperbola and how does it work? In a normal hyperbola, the two axes of symmetry are. Well, for this particular one, for this particular one, C is zero because there's been no transformation. This is the normal um, hyperbola without any left, right, any up, down. Then that would be y equal to x and y equal to negative x. Done. Right? But now I know this is going to be an up-down movement. It's still going to go through the y equals 2. Now I'm not quite sure what it's going to be. So I might be not helping myself here. x, but I need a plus something. And the same over here. Because it has 2. The axis of symmetry for our hyperbola is always these two possibilities. Plus x plus something, or minus x plus something. And to find c anywhere in any sketch, one variable, how do you do it? By what? Excellent. That's there where those two asymptotes cut. Because remember, the graph is not there, but the axis of symmetry cuts through there, and the axis of symmetry cuts through there, and the point is? 1 and 2. One and two. So, so I'm substituting 1 and 2. Is it coming back to you? 2 in the place of y, 1 in the place of x, so c is equal to negative 1. And this one as well, 2 in the place of y, 1 in the place of x, so c is equal to 3. I'm done. No, please answer the question. The equations are y equal to positive x minus 1, y equal to negative x plus g. Those are my two possibilities. Do we normally ask both? Normally we can't spend that many marks. So I'll say, find the axis of symmetry with a negative gradient. Find the axis of symmetry that is decreasing, increasing. Are you with me? Normally, so you've got to know which one of the two I'm asking. Right, that being said, let's get into the sketch of the hyperbolic inverse. Oh my word. Okay, I'm warning you, it's terrible. It will not be asked in an exam, and I'm saying it on video. It will not be asked in an exam if you must sketch it. But would you be able to sketch this? Yes. I just need some space here. Thank you. I just need some space so that I can sketch it. Let's do it in green. Blue. Let's do it in blue. <clears throat> I think the green is so. Better. So if I have to sketch 
this. First thing you do is the same as you did with the original one. Go. Remember, I don't want the axes of symmetry. Don't need them. I want the line of symmetry, y is equal to x, around which it does reflect. So, firstly, the axis of symmetry won't be x equals 1, it'll be y equals 1. Then it won't be y equals 2, it'll be x equals 2. And if you lose color, then it's still bad, but it's not that bad. You can see I'm busy with the blue one now. Now the blue part of the graph will then also still be here, right? I'm just going to make sure that it now doesn't go through there. It must come here and it must go further than that one. The red one came close to there, but mine is going to go. Okay, now I'm crooking it right because I know what you know should be, let's do black. This line, oh no, that also doesn't want to work. Should be the line y equal to x. What is that line? The line around which this red and blue one will reflect each other. Like I said, it's not going to be asked for an exam. I want to show you just what it looks like. But then on this side, we're going to have the x intercept should now be the y-intercept at negative 2. The y-intercept of negative 4 should now be the x-intercept and it should still go through where? Are you with me? So there, I'm betting your life on it to go through there. So that my graph comes closer to this blue asymptote and through there and through there and I'm cutting through that one because it's going to go to the blue one. Are you with me here? Yes. No, my sketch is definitely not a prize winner at all. But hopefully you can see that those two are the reflections and those two are the reflections. You will not be asked to sketch this. So why am I wasting your time? To show you that the inverse of a, of a hyperbola is a Hyperbola. Brainstorm. No. Inverse of the line is a line. Inverse of a parabola doesn't have a name. It's called the inverse of a parabola. But the inverse of a hyperbola quite clearly is still a hyperbola. Are you with me? So is it a function? Yes. Yes. A hyperbola is a function because for every x there's only one. Why? If it's not a function, for every x, there's not only one y. Are you happy with that? Sorry, just to get back, I made a mistake here. That should be positive one, because it goes across and becomes a positive one. When if you sketched it, that it's going to go through there, where the axes of symmetry come together, the two red, uh, yeah, red ones originally, it'll go through there to number one. Okay. And this one, did I make a mistake? No, it's fine. That one is fine. Right.